Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of The Hot Seat, a wireless design and development interview series where we talk about the latest wireless technologies, components, and design issues for the wireless design engineering community. Today we are speaking with Bill Bitterman, Vice President of Engineering at Airgain, a leading provider of embedded antenna products, integration support, and test services for the in-home wireless device market. With over 25 years of technical and management experience, Bill's career has been marked by successful engagements at some of the biggest names in the technology arena, as well as aggressive and innovative emerging firms. He has served in executive positions with a variety of Silicon Valley companies, including Pixum, Chromatic Research, and TriPath Technology. Bill began his career designing DRAMs and CCDs at the HP Labs and TI Central Research Lab. He has served many roles with the IEEE Solid State Circuit Society and is currently serving as its president. He holds bachelor's of science and master's of science degrees in electrical engineering and computer science from MIT and has been awarded 17 patents. Today, Bill will be discussing the Airmetric, a Wi-Fi performance modeling solution. Hi, Bill. What was occurring within the wireless device market that created the need for the Airmetric Wi-Fi performance modeling solution? Well, Megan, in high tech, whether it's designing integrated circuits or simulating flight characteristics of the latest aircraft, simulations played a vital role. And being able to predict and use um, performance modeling tools is very critical. Up until now, that hasn't been possible in the Wi-Fi wi performance arena, but the power of Airmetric ensures peak performance of the final product. Uh, antenna design and placement are key parameters of any wireless product, but system characteristics like device size, PCB layout, or heat sink placement, all these can have significant implications for system performance. Industrial design is one example. The look of the product is very important. It's it, both visually and uh, the user physical user interface. Uh, it's, in fact, it's the first thing the customer really sees when he takes it out of the box. Um, but the look of the product can change its performance. Um, we can make trade-offs of small changes in ID design and measure the impact on throughput, which is really what the customer has purchased the product for. Sometimes adding a few millimeters to one dimension of a product can really impact throughput, which is the single most important measure. Until now, the ID has been unchangeable for the most part when the final integration is done due to the high cost of tooling and the delay of product introduction. Now those trade-offs can be made before the ID is finalized. Airgain can now have conversations with system designers where we can say, for instance, if you add three millimeters to the height or width of the device, we could increase performance by 30% or so. That's just an example, but it's typical of the types of conversations and trade-offs that have not been possible previously. A common challenge for device designers are that early design decisions are locked down and they can have significant implications of system performance. Late binding changes in these areas lead to introduction delays and sometimes very large cost overruns. So concurrently optimizing time to market, design, and production cost while measuring performance simultaneously is really what it's all about. Can you describe the technology behind the Airmetric and how it successfully provides wireless device manufacturers with early stage design recommendations? It's really a combination of a number of technologies that Airgain has developed over the past several years. The first component is our proprietary turntable testing methodology. We use counter-rotating turntables for the AP and station to measure throughput at multiple orientations. 36 stops in most instances. And then we take the average of those measurements to provide an accurate and repeatable means to evaluate antenna performance. The method typically provides about a 3 to 10x improvement in accuracy and repeatability over other techniques and more importantly measures throughput, the key metric in Wi-Fi systems. We have a variety of dedicated test ranges throughout the world where we run these turntable tests in real world residential and commercial environments to compare our, our antenna solutions to our competitors. That gave us the first piece of the puzzle, accurate, repeatable throughput measurements. We've been using and refining this technique as part of our normal business for several years. 
Thousands of hours of test time and hundreds of successful product deployments have produced a wealth of data on what works and what doesn't in doing antenna integrations. Mining this large database produced a variety of insights into link characteristics, channel models, device size, and other parameters that really aren't apparent from a single test or even a small number of tests. This gave us the second piece of the puzzle, a large database that allowed us to develop heuristic rules for optimizing Wi-Fi systems. The last piece was already in existence, the ability to simulate with software or directly antenna measure antenna patterns either in isolation or embedded in our products. We do that with our RF test chamber. Combining all three of these produced a software system, AirMetric, that comprehends antenna patterns, real-world connection links, channel models, and accurate measurements to allow predictive Wi-Fi performance analysis and all the benefits of the AirMetric system. How else is AirMetric unique from traditional design solutions for wireless devices? There are uh, simulation tools that, that do simulation in the Wi-Fi arena, 3D finite element modeling of radiation patterns for existence, but not simulation tools that can predict throughput. It's, been, it's a bit like simulating stress and strain in airplane wings, but not being able to predict flight characteristics for takeoff or fuel economy, et cetera. And those are the things that really make the high level uh, performance trade-offs for an airplane. Airmetric allows those sorts of antenna, those sorts of antenna parameters and antenna designers and system designers to completely explore the space of system performance based on antenna design parameters and integration. So then how would Airmetric set the bar for system design? Maybe it, maybe setting the bar is, is one way to say it, but it really sets more of a clear yardstick for predicting performance of Wi-Fi wi systems before they're built. In the end, that will raise performance across the board as Many parameters that had to be committed to early in the design process can be traded off. The ability to explore the design space more fully by simulation rather than physical construction of the device means more optimized systems will result. Prior to the introduction of AirMetric, AirGain solutions outperform our competitors by an average of 30%. With AirMetric's predictive power, we should see big improvements over even that significant advantage. Well, those were all the questions that I had for you today, Bill. Is there anything else that you would like to add to the conversation that you think is important for our viewers to know about the AirMetric? I think the, uh, the real thing that AirGain is doing is leveraging and building its intellectual property portfolio to include both standard things, radiation patterns, uh, and standard antenna measurements with its, as I said, its large database and testing experience and fundamental research into the integration of antennas in Wi-Fi and other products. So I'm really looking forward to the future. I would like to take this time, Bill, to thank you for joining us today and discussing the AirMetric. For WDD, I'm Megan Zimba, and I'll see you next time in the hot seat.